Hello, my dear YouTuber friends, and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video. In this video, I'm going to talk about a modification that's been made by a chap called Kevin Van D. Apologies, Kevin, you'll probably laugh I can't pronounce your surname, but Kevin will do. He bought the Velocity One Flight Yoke wasn't satisfied with the way the elevator axis performed, as many of us weren't, and came up with a modification that clips onto the back of the shaft for the Velocity One flight yoke, and smooths out that elevator axis to an incredible amount. Actually makes this flight yoke system completely worth having and buying now. It's almost on par with the Honeycomb XPC in the elevator axis. Like I said, it's just a mod. 3D printed mod. And it's got a couple of bearings there. I'm going to talk about this in more detail in this video. It goes on the back of the shaft and yeah, it just really fixes those elevator issues with the Velocity One Flight Yacht system. So I'm going to talk about that in this video. Show you what you get included. Talk about where to get it from, what you get included with the packaging, talk about how to fix it to the yoke system, that type of thing. And then in the video, I'm going to show you how this performs in Microsoft Flight Sim. So listen, let's not dilly dally. Let's get on with this video. Okay, so let's talk about where to get it from. It's on Etsy, and there you go. Where's your name, Kevin? Kevin Van D. I'm just going to stop there. But there you go, there's Kevin. And as you can see in the UK, only three left at the time of recording. This is highly popular. I think after this video, this is going to fly, Kevin. Uh, 27 25 Nice price, isn't it? And if you go through the pictures, it will show you what you get. Let me just show you something on screen. I'm just showing you a video there of what's contained in the packaging. It's a small packaging. It will fit through a letterbox, in fact. And that's just to cut down on the costs on Kevin's side. It's only quite a small thing you get the, you know, you get the actual unit itself and some bearings wrapped up. I'm going to talk about them in more detail. Let's take that off screen. So there you go. If you go on here as well, you can see all the pictures and show how it's fitted and goodness knows what. Now, Kevin, I believe this ships worldwide, doesn't it? Uh, can you please confirm that? Kevin sent me this unit uh, for review purposes, so thank you very much, Kevin. I'm really glad I've got this, as I'll show you in the sim. Lots of positive reviews. Look at those reviews. Five stars. And people have a lot of good things to say. I'm going to link this down in the description. You can come and read this for yourself. But there you go. What I'm also going to link, because this is important, it's a video by Kevin. Let me just turn that sound down. And it'll show you how to actually fit this to your Velocity One flight yacht system. I could show you that myself, but Kevin shows it excellently in his video. Go and give him a subscribe, chaps. I mean, this guy deserves a lot. I'm going to talk about more about that later too. Give the video, this video of his, a like and subscribe. He really deserves it. But yeah, he'll show you how to fit it to the flight yacht system. Let's just get a bit further on. There you go. And he, yeah, it just shows you all that type of thing. So go and watch through that video if you maybe even before buying it, if you're interested in this, just to see how it fits. Quite easy. It took me five to ten minutes to fit it to my Velocity One fl uh, so Velocity One flight yacht system. So there you go. So what I'll do now, my fine people, I'm going to jump into Microsoft Flight Sim. I'm going to show you the yoke, how it works by standard in with the elevator trim. And then I'll put on uh, Kevin's modification here. and show you how it improves the elevator axis in Microsoft Flight Sim. So here we are at Haddison International, London City Airport in a Cessna 182RG. Now, I I don't know if you can see that, but I've actually loosened 
the binding. I've not taken it off. I've just it's just not working because it's not fitted to the back, so it's dangling on the shaft. So this is the yoke system, velocity one flight yoke in its default state, as it were. What I'll do, I'll throttle up, release the parking brake, just using the triggers on the back of the yoke system, which are absolutely fine for triggers. They're adaptive triggers and they work well if you don't own rudder pedals. It's not about that, it's about the elevator axis on the yoke in this case. So keep in mind people, this is default, this is probably what you're all used to. I'll take off. Raise my landing gear. And yeah, I can already feel, I don't know if you can see that, but I mean you compensate for it. You can compensate for that. Let's just trim down and get myself in trim there. You can comp some c compensate for it, but that's not the point, is it? It's quite a stiff. When you're coming into land, that I mean, I'm only using one hand, but you'll see later. I'll use the elk with one hand with that mod fitted properly. It's not at the moment. Keep that in mind. Oh, let's just trim down. There we go. Just bring that, that throttle a wee bit. There we go. Trim back up now. <laughs> Lovely trim wheel, always enjoy using that trim wheel. It's not about that anyway, it's, look, you can see the jitteriness. It's just not great by default. You can compensate for it, you can get away with it. Oh no, okay, listen, let me show you what the sim's like, what this yoke system is like with that modification fitted properly. So there you go, now with the binding fixer attached to the yoke system. So let's see what a difference this will make. So, had me throttle up already, never mind. Just stop that flashing guy. I like to put that on standby, that's better. Well, let's see what a difference this will hopefully make. Hopefully my arm's not in the way there. Let's do that to make it easier for you to see. So we'll get up to speed here to take off as always. Pull back. Oh, goodness, you can always detail the difference. Pull back, raise my landing gear. Oops. Just get that trim wheel correct there. There we go. Get it nicely trimmed out. And there we go. Just, you can tell the difference immediately. Just the flexibility and smoothness now in that elevator axis. It's like chalk and cheese, my friends. Really is. Very, very smooth. Yeah, no issues whatsoever. Let me just trim down a little bit. There we go. Put my throttle back a little bit too. And then just trim up a little bit. When that trim wheel works, it's fantastic. It works fine on the Velocity 1 flight yacht system. It's just a incompatibility with the sim itself and an analog trim. It's not just the Velocity 1 flight yacht system. Well, there we go. Let's concentrate back on that elevator axis. Just pushing it through the test there. Whoa, I mean, London's looking as crumpled as always. Not too bad, I guess, at the moment. What a beautiful axis. What I'll do is carry on flying towards the centre of London there, turn back and come on to some kind of approach to London City Airport. So there you go, I'm on some kind of approach for London City Airport there. I've got my gear down. Let me just bring in that camera. There we go. So as you can see, now let me just move my hand out of the way so you can see. So let's just put one stage of flaps in. I've got buttons set on my Velocity 1. That's a wonderful thing about that Velocity 1 flight yacht system, isn't it? That range of buttons. Now with this modification, it's elevated again. So London City's just behind that building ahead of us there. Now problem, we nail this airport like the back of our hands now, don't we? So there we go. Just using small elevator ad adjustments, which you can now do even one-handed. Look, no issues at all. My goodness me, it's chalk and cheese compared to the default state of the oak system. I'll just slow down a wee bit more. Never notch your flaps. Watch for that lift. 
and it should start descending on its own will. May I think my trim's slightly out of sync there, so I'm just going to trim down a little bit. There you go. Now my trim's a little bit better, and I'll just control this now with throttle adjustments and elevate adjustments one-handed, as you can see. Ah. Oh. Do have me gear down. I mean, I can see inside the aircraft. I do, but just double check. There we go. Small elevator pitch adjustments there. Bring that throttle back a wee bit more now. Not all the way yet, because we're not all the runway. That will be a bit silly. But enough that you start descending. Gradually, Pappy lights are not perfect, but it would do. I'm just going to do just uh, in this case performing a landing. Now I do prefer to land with both hands on the oak system, so I'll put one underneath, so just so you can see the movements of the oak. Bring that throttle back now and just float over that runway. Look at that. Look at what you can do now. I wouldn't normally have my hands in this position. 68. Not bad, eh? And then bring it off to the... What button do I have set up for brakes? That button. Bring it off to the left there. Ah, you know, that'll do. Parking brake on. Raise my flaps. Chalk and cheese, people. Okay, let me take you to my conclusion and recommendations. Conclusion time and recommendations. Do I recommend this? You know, for the cost and what it does to that elevator with the Velocity 1 flight yoke system. I'm telling you, it's very close to the XPC yoke. Now, it has a different resistance. That's the only thing missing. But, you know, if you wanted a yoke system for the... Especially if you're on Xbox or PC, in fact. An all-inclusive yoke system with a trim wheel, rudder pedals on the back, rudder triggers... This fantastic layout of buttons and now that modification. This is the one to get for the price. If you want to keep those costs down, this is the one to get. But with this modification... Now, of course, people were saying, this, you know, that kind of thing should have been there day one with the yoke itself. I had issues with the elevator axis. They did smooth out, but not enough to where I was completely satisfied. This now fixes it. Completely recommended, but you know what? I'm going to give an extra recommendation. Turtle Beach. Going forward, might be a good idea to get in touch with Kevin. See what you can do to either include this modification with the flight yacht systems. Of course, with Kevin's agreement and some monetary sort of compensation to Kevin. Get in touch with him. See what you can do. Because it does elevate it. This makes this flight yacht system now completely worth buying. It was already worth buying previous to that. Now this just elevates it to, it's almost like a must buy within that price range. You don't want to spend six, seven hundred to get, you know, rudder pedals that are down there at the moment. Uh, if you're going for the XPC Yelk, maybe the Bravo Quadrant, you know, up to £900 that, isn't it? You don't want to spend that kind of money, a few hundred pound with this modification. Brilliant. Fantastic, Kevin. Thank you for sending me this unit. Complete record. Look, Velocity 1 Flight Yield System, if you own one, buy one of these. Do not sit on that. Don't dilly-dally, people. <laughs> buy it. So there you go. That's my recommendation. Let me know your thoughts on the video. Give it a like if you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to go and enter the competition for the Velocity 1 Flight Stick. Fantastic flight stick that I'm giving away. I'll link it in the top right and I'll also link it down below in the description. That competition is going to run to the 16th of February. If you don't have a Velocity 1 flight stick, well worth entering. Anyway people, I'll see you soon.